Can I introduce uh, David Willits, the Right Honourable David Willits MP, who is the Minister of State uh, for Universities and Science and uh, has sponsored this report. And uh, over to you, David. Well, thank you very much. You may notice I'm not therefore going to talk about the details of staff security arrangements. I apologise <laughs> for that. Very important though it is. And I'm grateful to PwC, not just for the excellent survey that they have uh, produced again for us, but also for your flexibility. I'm sorry that I've been uh, delayed partly by the traffic. And uh, so uh, thank you for your flexibility in allowing me to join you now. I don't know how much of the survey headlines you have shared with the audience uh, already, and I won't uh, go through the detail because clearly you've, you've heard a lot. But uh, I think the messages, there are mixed messages from this survey, uh, but there are some promising trends. And we in the government, with our commitment to cyber security, do pay very close attention to this survey and what it tells us about what's going on. Um, for us, I think the, the encouraging trends first, the number of companies that suffered a breach is down compared with last year. Investment in, in, in information security has increased, notably in small companies, and there is increasing confidence in the availability of the security skills necessary to manage the risk. So those are three very welcome trends which we strongly endorse. Uh, but turning to the rather more salutary news from the survey, it's about the economic impact of cyber attacks. With the average cost of breaches nearly doubling, the average cost of the worst security breach for large organisations is now between £600,000 and £1.5 million. And for small organisations, it's between £65,000 and £115,000. So there is still more for us to do, and a very important reminder in this survey of the economic uh, cost of cyber attack. We, of course, in the UK government take it very seriously, um, and we take it very seriously for lots of reasons. We pride ourselves on having a particularly large and growing online economy, with the internet accounting for 8% of our GDP. So it's important that we maintain people's confidence in doing business online. Um, and that's one of the crucial reasons for our national cyber security strategy. Uh, and we've also put in place our national cyber security program with what is now 860 million pounds of public support over the five years of 2016. So yes, we've got to make it safe to do business online. We want to protect particularly the private sector who are the biggest single victims of cyber crime. And I recently announced a new government scheme to help businesses stay safe online, the Cyber Essentials Scheme, which provides clarity to organisations on what cyber security practice is and sets out the steps they need to follow cyber risks. It's a robust and easy to use and cost effective way to help businesses and the public sector protect against the risks of operating online. Uh, so we're very proud of uh, those type of initiatives. And we see this as not just a matter of protecting online business, we also see the opportunities for growing cyber as a, as a key part of the economy, which is why I co-chair the Cyber Growth Partnership, which has de developed a scheme to enable suppliers of cyber products and services to HMD, HMG to state that publicly when they are pursuing business. And we are aiming to increase the value of the UK's cybersecurity exports to £2 billion a year by 2016, and also increase our overall capability in cybersecurity skills, research, and innovation. Uh, so, we are continuing to support this very important agenda. Uh, a very recent initiative from the Technology Strategy Board is a investing, it'll be investing up to half a million pounds in innovative R&D projects with a focus on the emerging cluster of cybersecurity companies in the Seven Valley and around Morven. And this is, uh, as you know, there's a very lively debate in the business economics fraternity about clusters, economic clusters. And these initiatives are uh, uh, the TSB supporting identified clusters of activity in a particular area. We've run competitions like this for motorsport in Oxfordshire and Northamptonshire. Uh, in Tech City in uh, London. And this initiative 
uh, aims to, to stimulate this hotspot of cybersecurity industries by enabling companies to go further or faster towards commercial success. And I'm pleased to announce the winners of this competition, who are D-Risk Limited, Montvieux Limited, Pixelpin, C2B2 Consulting Limited, Infinite Precision Limited, Babel IT Systems Limited, and Westgate Cybersecurity Limited. And these companies are all developing innovative solutions to complex and evolving cyber problems. Now, I'd like to congratulate them on their success to date and hope that this support from the TSB enables them to grow more in the future. Um, and I hope that we will be able to see further expansion and growth of the cyber sector in the future. We have great ambitions for it. We see it as a way of protecting business online, of creating new business opportunities. And let me end by thanking PwC for their hard work in putting this survey together and to thank the number of independent reviewers who helped identify and interpret the key security issues. And let me also thank the large numbers of those who've contributed through out of time out of their busy schedules simply to complete the survey so that we have the kind of basis that we need for assessing performance. So I now have time, if you would wish, to take a couple of questions or re respond to comments you may have, either about this specific survey uh, or more widely about the government's cybersecurity strategy. Thank you very much indeed. Sembi from ISACA. Uh, just wanted to ask the Minister, when do you think it's likely that we're going to see someone in Cabinet responsible for cybersecurity? Well, the Cabinet Committee on Cyber Security is chaired by William Hague, uh, and indeed he originally put this whole topic on the agenda shortly after we arrived in government, um, and he uh, has overall responsibility. Uh, Francis Maud and I also have cyber security responsibilities and attend and participate in Cabinet and it's, I think it's clear from the level of engagements it's having from ministers and the funding it's getting, it's something that the government has actually is high priority to. Okay, thank you, Minister. Thank you, everybody. Very interesting report. I just want to make a comment that coming out as well this week is something called um, banana skins, financial banana skins in the banking world. And cybersecurity in terms of the risk has leapt from something quite low to be number four. So kind of very impressed that there's a correlation there in the awareness side. Um, that brings me on to my other bit, that obviously we're talking about security here. But one thing that I find um, having a problem with is coming from the assurance side. How can, whether you're a regulator or an auditor, what kind of tricks yeah. of the trade do we need yeah. to say great about your policies, great that you've got implementation in, but how do we provide the assurance? And to me, that is where there's a little bit of oh. the gap and catch-up is needed. Just like your opinion, please, Minister, and yeah. obviously PwC colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that is a very fair point. And in one of the ways that we have uh, tried to put cybersecurity on the agenda is trying to reach companies via auditors and also, I should say, uh, insurers. And the, our uh, and non-executive directors, because part of our analysis of what was going wrong is it was it was being left to the technical experts within the organization rather than being brought up to board level. Uh, and I'm very encouraged. The evidence we, with our 10 steps to cybersecurity, which was intended as a kind of layman's guide for a non-executive director to challenge a company, I think that's been used a lot. Um, uh, I have written to and um, engaged with the main auditing firms so that they're aware of this as an issue. Uh, and my impression is that now there are board level discussions where there's a recognition that cyber is one of the key risks facing many companies and they have to discuss it at board level. 
I hope that some of the material we've provided to auditors, we've directly communicated with auditors and so some of our officials as well, I hope some of the guidance we've given to auditors has helped auditors go through their responsibilities and know the right questions to ask. If there's more that needs to be done in that area, I'm very happy to uh, follow up further on the advice of, of PwC and others. Thank you, Minister and uh, gentlemen from PwC. Quick question about um, dete detectability. Uh, I can't detect you at the moment. No. I, can't, I don't know where I'm looking. All no. oh, right, good, Sorry. brilliant. You're now detected. There is some research to suggest that the, uh, the perpetrators and hackers are better at covering their tracks these days. So it may well be that the number of breaches is not decreasing. It's just our ability to detect them. Are you taking that into account? Uh -huh. So no complacency. Yeah. yeah. I can do that one. Uh, that is, yeah, I mean, perhaps, uh, yeah, we, well, you're going to hear from uh, PwC about it. I mean, the, but that is certainly an issue that we are aware of. People may not even know that they have been under cyber. In some forms of cyber attack you're aware of, others you're not aware of. But do you want to comment on how you've handled that in the survey? Indeed. Um, in the survey, we actually asked uh, organisations um, about how they go about detecting incidents or breaches. And we asked them about uh, breaches that make it into the press or out into the wide world. What we found was uh, three out of ten incidents make it into the public. So there's 70% of breaches that never kind of make it outside the organization for anyone to hear about. So everything that you see in the press or in the media really only equates to a maximum 30% of that. In addition to that, what we've seen with uh, the likes of the malware and the duration of breaches when they're discovered actually leads us to suggest that um, you know, they, are, they are very subtle, um, they're much more complex, and in fact they may not be detected instantly, and it can take some time to, to pick that up. Our survey only deals with breaches that have been detected that individuals can declare to us. Obviously, they don't know what they don't know. Um, and we can look at the trends to infer some of the other characteristics. I should say, of course, there, are, there is an th uh, intermediate category. There are cyber breaches that um, companies are aware of and are willing to uh, discuss with us or share with other companies, but don't make it into the public arena. And that is a significant uh, part of cyber attack and we're trying to encourage companies even in confidence just to pool information about the cyber attacks they face. Perhaps one last question, yeah. Uh, Simon Boxall, uh, I'm the Information Security Manager at London Borough of Camden Council, so I'm going to move this to a uh, public environment for a second. Um, I'm just interested in how you're managing and looking at the boards uh, for all of the uh, public environments and their approach to information security, what we're finding there are environments, although some, and I am well supported by my environment, but other councils and other industries we work with, we find that some IT environments are being limited and the security environment is being affected by that. And we're finding that some information security manager are being sidestepped entirely and that's going into a different environment. So do you foresee that becoming an issue for the future for the public sector? Yeah, that's an interesting point. I mean, we do, through our um, overall cybersecurity policy, we are trying to uh, in protect the public sector and we do communicate with all the leading uh, agencies with uh, significant IT coverage uh, to ensure that they are cyber aware. Um, and uh, I'm concerned if, there, if you don't think local authorities are wholeheartedly participating in that. I'll happily discuss it with my colleague Eric Pickles. Um, but yeah, I think that with our cyber security guidance and the work that we are doing is, in, is aimed at uh, ensuring that safety across the public sector as well, not just for the business community. Well, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for your interest in this very important subject. And thank you again to PwC for your excellent survey. Thanks very much. Thank you. Excuse me a minute.